I'm not satisfied. So what did you want? What were you? I you wanted exactly what you saw. Uh -huh. That's what I wanted. I wanted you to look at that film and go, who is that dude? Okay. Or if you knew who I was, yeah, he did that. What I'm mad about, respect. Yeah. That's what I was fighting for. Respect me. I am yeah. the real deal and you fools are going to see it. Everybody, from network to studio to right. audience to public, I'm him. What's going on, world? This is Big Court of the Holding Court Podcast. Man, we broadcast live from a new stage, Los right. Angeles, California. What's up, producer Ken? Man, you it's, Bur it's, it's, it's Burbank, but we could. <laughs> no, it's Los Angeles. Burbank. Oh, sorry. Whatever. Burbank's yeah. its own city. They incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> man, listen, what's up? Uh, Rachel Renee. Good day, LA. <laughs> yeah, got my oldest daughter, man. Uh, for those that's watching, you see we got a new setup, new set. You know, I wanted to freshen it up for 2024, you know, so we coming in strong. Just wanted to give it a new look. Uh, we have been doing the same thing for about two years. Y'all been rocking with us, but, you know, hope y'all like it. You know what I mean? What you think about it, Rachel? Because it's your first it. time seeing it. I love it. You love it? We look like Transformers. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But listen, today, man, we got a special, special guest. And I don't say that lightly because uh, this gentleman, he does not do interviews uh, for the most part. He, he's he got a long career, 30, about 32 years or so. 32 years. 32 years. And he did this at, on the strength as a favor. And I appreciate him, you know. Um, and what I really admire is this brother, he's never been involved in any controversy, any bullshit. He just literally does the work and and, 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 and leads, <laughs> you know, <laughs> by example. But uh, man, actor, producer, man, Teen Choice Award nominee, <laughs> Wesley Jonathan. What's good with you, fam? What's Sorry. happening, man? How y'all doing? Thank you yeah. for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Been, I've been trying to get you on here for a while, brother. I heard. <laughs> I heard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, I mean, how did you get him on? Tell, tell, tell All people right, how. I, I'll say it because I, I got to give love. Man, shout out to my production partner, my dear friend, Jasmine Lewis. Jasmine Lewis. Jasmine Lewis. Um, I, have been Jas I had reached out to, to him and I don't think he responded to me. No, actually you did. But it was just very polite, just kind of like, oh, I'll me. let you know. That's you know me. what I'm saying? I'll let you know. That's me. Uh, yeah. And so I told, um, I was talking to Jasmine, who's mm -hmm. been on the show as well. Mm -hmm. And I said, man, you know, I really want to get Wesley. Nobody has gotten him. And he's got a great <laughs> story. And then he's a positive brother as well. Yeah. And so she was like, oh, I know that's, Wesley. Yeah. You know, I know that's, Wesley. That's easy. Yeah, I'll call him. Yeah. He don't do it. He'll do it for me. Yeah. So I was like, whatever. I was like, sure you can So she hit me. She said, yeah, he'll do it. So <laughs> I said, wow. I said, yeah. okay, cool. So. Uh, man, we finally here, brother. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you, man. No you doubt. have a very interesting story. Um, um, and I initially I built this platform because we wanted to give people their flowers, you know. Oh, and that's great. and you are one of those guys that that you know again, just in terms of the positivity, just never being in mess, mm -hmm. and just leading by example, mm -hmm. and and a great talent as well. So I had to get you on here, you know Thank what I mean? You, and I want to be able to share your journey, share your story with the world. Oh, all right. You know, so Appreciate I just it. want to start at the beginning, man. Where, where'd you grow up? Um, I was born uh, up north uh, in the Bay, okay. but as a newborn child, I was predominantly raised in Southern California. Oh, okay. I've lived uh, all over. I see, I went to elementary school in West LA. Mm -hmm. uh, I went to Crescent Heights Elementary, Canfield Elementary, um, and then, uh, the, the valley, okay. I mean everywhere from Woodland Hills to Sherman Oaks to ah. uh, North Hollywood. To, okay. I used to live in Burbank, right around the corner. Oh wow! Uh, I mean everywhere, everywhere right. over over the hill. So, uh, I'm a Cali kid. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Um, being that, I mean, we're I'm only a couple years older than you, but you still came up in a time where, uh, I mean, L.A. is you know it's it's gang central. Mm -hmm. So how did you? Managed to navigate that and and not go down that road. Well, um, let's see. From the age of three to seven, I spent about three or four years in West Berlin, Germany. My mom and my father divorced. Uh, she remarried, and uh, next thing you know, we we're in Europe. Uh, my little sister was born in West Berlin, Germany. Uh, so that took some time away from the states and here. When I got back. Uh, that's when I was going to school in LA. Um, I 
I was raised as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm in fact one of Jehovah's Witnesses. So my my foundation is is very uh, I don't want to say strict, mm -hmm. but there was a ground there. Uh, there was a sense of uh, humility in my whole family. We strive for uh, that humble, you know, Bible principle uh, aspect of life. So now, my, mind you, no one's perfect, mm -hmm. uh, but that was the the, the striving for. Mm -hmm. um, rather than shrugging your shoulders and just doing things saying, oh, Jesus got me. No, no, you, you apply, try to apply in your imperfection what you can to be <clears throat> a decent person. Right. Um, so a lot of that helped kind of, you know, I had a lot of friends who were, who were in gangs. Uh, and, I, you know, I, but I wasn't, I wasn't submersed in that. I didn't grow up in South Central, although I had friends, that were, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So there was a distance. West LA was, you know, yeah. not far, but But far you know, it enough. goes down in some of them cities in the Valley too. The valley well, got no, its pockets. No, yeah, that's yeah. not, that's, yeah, no, the, yeah. the Valley wasn't uh, exactly immune exactly. to that either. Cause exactly. it's, you know, gang, gang life spread, you know, all over the place. Yes, sir. But, uh, just wasn't my thing. Okay. From the time I was four years old, I, mm -hmm. I, I was, you know, consumed mm -hmm. with being a star, consumed mm -hmm. with being bigger than big. So gang life didn't appeal to me. Yeah. I didn't see anything in that. You didn't see any <laughs> yeah, benefit I, I, from no what No benefit you were whatsoever, to. even at that age. Yeah. Well, why would I want to do that? Yeah. Exactly. It made me mad. Wear any color you want. Who cares well, what color you wear? Well, let me ask you. So you being so young, uh, how did that seed get planted? Or was it just innate? Were you just born with that? Innate. Really? Yeah, I don't know. Well, I mean, I guess you can, the seed was Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah. I mean, at four years old, and I see this dude, and uh Motown 25 well yeah it was that era yeah. but it was um it was even off the wall I mean, oh, that's okay. how I, and you, that's, yeah. I mean Thriller was the one that kind of made me go okay yeah off the wall I was still <clears throat> very little but the music resonated but it wasn't until I started standing up and actually understanding choreography and duplicating mm -hmm. Thriller was the thing that was just constantly rewinding over and over again and yeah. Motown 25 yeah. so that let me when I looked at him and saw his talent, his magnitude, and that power that he had, I was like, I want to be bigger than that. Yeah, you know what I mean. So the perfection, perfectionist aspect started even at, again like a kid. When other kids wanted to play, I wanted to you know rewind it and figure out how to moonwalk. Wow! <laughs> Did you grow up with both parents in the house? No. Oh. Uh, my mom, my my stepfather ended up dying at thirty seven as a, a heart attack in Germany. So I was raised from single. Single okay, parent. Okay. Um, you have a relationship with your biological. Well, my biological father uh, later on in life. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, he's, he's passed in 2017, 18. Okay. Sorry. Uh, diabetes. That. So, but we we uh, he peeked in and out of my life every day. Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm not one of those. that's like, oh, my dad wasn't in my life, and uh, you know, and I'm saying I'm not mocking people who you yeah. know, but I just didn't whine about that. Yeah. Did it affect me? Yeah. On the surface, I would go, no. My mom did a wonderful job, but then mm -hmm. when you Probably if I talk to a psychologist and peel back later layers yeah. of certain things, they'll go, "That's a trauma from not having a father." Or, yeah. But for me, I'm perfectly fine. My mom is from East St. Louis. She's a gangster, so she did what she had to do, and she's very raw. She's very blunt. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. I was the only son. I was raised around a house full of women, so um, that was another motivating factor. I needed to take care of. I didn't want my mom to work, mm -hmm. and I didn't want you know my sisters or anybody to struggle. So, um, yeah. So my, my father not being around. That's I didn't. Crazy. I was. I didn't hold any grudges with him. He was a good-looking man. He had money. He was yeah. doing his thing, and he didn't do things right, just like a lot of us don't. Yeah, and that's what it is, you know. Brother, you. That's funny. We have parallel stories in that respect. Cause <clears throat> same thing with me. I'm my only child, mm -hmm. and my father. I didn't grow up with my father, but I never had any ill feelings toward my father. Like yeah. for whatever reason. Now, when you say peeling back those layers, it wasn't until I had my son that I seen oh. that. Oh, okay. Because when I first had my son, I didn't know how to show him affection mm -hmm. because I had never been shown affection by I'm not man. an affectionate person. Right. And neither is my mother. So, so yeah. <laughs> and see, my mother was. She was very yeah. doting, very okay. uh, loving and all of that. Yeah. And and I grew up around, I was raised by strong women. My grandmother, my mm -hmm. aunt, my mother, you know. So it was my father-in-law who used to like hug me and, and kiss me and embrace me. Mm. And I would kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it wasn't until we talked about it years later and I was like, damn, I said, this is because my dad had never Damn, embrace me, you, you know? Yeah. So it's funny, like you say, you peel back them layers, but I never made excuses, bro. Yeah. I don't have a reference point of what a husband looks like, what a mm -hmm. father looks like, especially in a home structure, right. you know? But I was able to do it. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so yeah. I, I subscribe to that same that mm -hmm. same mentality. No excuses, bro. Everybody got choices to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, did you peel back them layers and and figure out how it may have affected you? Uh, well, we just talked about the affection thing. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that has something to do with it, but uh, no. Do I? Do I or have I cried more than your average or typical man in life? Mm -hmm. Of course. Now, is that because I didn't have a father? Mm -hmm. Don't know. I mean, from what I know of my father, he's a sensitive dude, too. Mm -hmm. uh, very dramatic. <laughs> yeah. So, me, I'm very dramatic. Um, I've never been, <laughs> that's probably why as an actor, you know, I can do that. I can drop yeah. tears at the drop of a hat. So. Yeah. I don't know if that's something yeah. that a psychologist would be like, it's not having your father. I don't know. I just um Do nah. you cry? Do you find that the older that you have gotten, you're uh, more vulnerable, that maybe you cry a little bit easier just as you get older in life? That's I for sure do. I do too, bro. I'll be fighting that's back tears a lot of that's interesting. a lot of times. I'll be saying it'd be that's movies now where I'll be like, wow. Bruh. I thought it was just me. Hey, the, hey yeah, everyone's like, like right, I was just yawning. I'm still I was just yawning. I'm, people, I'm still a gangster. I want nah, everybody people could tear right? me up in the comments. Still, I know, I know right? where I'm from. That's funny. You know, I'm still a gangster. But I definitely, I got two boys. I, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. we got, we have similar stories yeah. with my yep. father and my yep. parents. My mom had me at 15. Yeah, and so you know, we grew up without a lot. Yeah. yeah, I have two boys now, and like you, yeah. actually, let me give you your flowers because I have people. I had my kids late. 30. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this kid's at 12. <laughs> <laughs> right here. About to be but I have all these friends, my homeboy Joe, my homeboy Rob, Court, mm -hmm. who had kids young. Mm -hmm. So by the time I had kids, I felt like I had peers that I respected mm -hmm. who had kids. Uh, but yeah, I'll be older now with my two sons, and I never had my dad in certain yeah. ways. Yeah. And we were watching, uh, there was like a Disney <laughs> movie about the kids going after their father who had died. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there like, <laughs> in the corner, just uh, onward. I think the movie is called. Oh yeah, yeah, with the no legs. Or, Bro, yeah, the, that the, the, was no horrible. type of body or whatever. That was horrible. You know what? I was just, I, I was, was just telling my mess. wife. I was just telling my wife, man, in the I most was, gangster way possible. Yeah, in the most gangster way. Yeah, I was at um Chipotle maybe about a week ago, and I was about to go to the gym, and um I seen a a, a young kid. He had to be maybe I don't know. He was in his twenties. And he was just sleeping outside. I could tell he was homeless. And maybe there was some drugs involved, you mm -hmm. know? And I felt so bad because mm -hmm. I have kids and I seen him as my child. Mm -hmm. I said, damn, what if that was my son mm -hmm. or my daughter yeah. out there, you know? And I don't know, it messed up my whole day, bro. Like, I, think, I was like, I think, damn. I think getting older and just being more, I mean, I, I think getting older and being more mature, Yeah, you tend to, well, you start to really understand how fragile life is. Yep. And we're not talking about just life and death, but just how things go. Yep. And it's Ups fleeting, and too. It's yep. yeah. fleeting. And it's very, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when you're young, you do have a thing of forever you, in mm -hmm. your mind. You know it's not forever, but you're young. So it's just like, ah, mm -hmm. you got time. But as we get older, start to look at your kids grow up, and there's a sensitivity there. It is. And to, for me, yeah. coming from the environment I came from, I can be very honest. There's a period in my life where I didn't necessarily put a lot of value on life. No. I really didn't. No, you, you know, it was right, like, right. Yeah. whatever. Yeah, you know I'll be what all mean? right. I'll be all right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's, but as I've gotten older, I'm like, damn, no. why is everything affecting me like that? The gravity yeah. of everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, everything going on in the world right now, this week, oh, yeah. today uh -huh. is yeah. heavy. Yeah. yeah. Heavy. Sometimes I have to turn off the news. Like, so I. Now, I try to watch but, the news, but that's another thing. Yeah. Uh, not to cut you no, off. No, go ahead, but, go ahead. But with you know, the if you're on the planet for forty plus years, and you've watched you know tragedy after tragedy, mm -hmm. nonsense after nonsense, and upsets after upsets, <clears throat> it piles, it piles, it piles. As opposed to a 15, 20 year old kid that's like, "What's the big deal?" Right. Mm -hmm. It blew up the house. It's messed up. Yeah. They keep on pushing. Yeah. But. You start yeah. really, you know what I mean? It's like, it's he it starts to get heavier. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? My son was born on 9-11 and we have, we have, I, I want to call them kids, but they're adults now, but I have kids here that weren't even alive. Mm -hmm. They're like production assistants. Yeah. They were born in 2000 or 2001. Yeah. They're in their early 20s. They're right. drinking. Right. And I'm like, my son's birthday is 9-11. I'm also talking about like, it's crazy. I'm so glad I had them. It gave like a new meaning to that day for me. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're like, well, it's 9-11. What, like, what's mm -hmm. the big? 
And I was like, whoa, bro, like it was a big deal. Yeah. It was a big, like, <laughs> yeah, like I was living up north in the bay. Yeah. There were gunships in the bay pointed at the bridges and the skies. And we thought, you know, yeah, we were it. in an all out war, war that day. Mm -hmm. And there's kids out here, like you said, have no point of reference. No. Yeah. They cruise through a day like that. Kind of like I guess I do like Pearl Harbor in, in December when well, yeah. when people are like Pearl Harbor I'm like oh okay yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's messed up and yeah. you keep on pushing but yeah it's, yeah because yeah. yeah. you weren't there it's not, there's no frame of reference gravity. no yeah like you didn't live through it no yeah. you didn't live through yeah. it yeah. yeah well let me ask you how, so what made you want to go into acting specifically obviously you were you know well originally I wasn't uh, thinking about acting uh, I wanted to be a singer and a dancer mm -hmm. um, acting came about. No, accident. Uh, you know, accidentally um, or accidental. My I had a uh, cousin. Uh, my cousin Crystal was an actress, and I used to always perform at family reunions. I mean, anywhere, I'll be in the grocery store. If I see a reflection of myself, I'd be moonwalking. You know, <laughs> yeah, as a kid, you know what I mean. So, um, they came to me. My mom and her came to me one day, sat me down, and asked me what I like to be in commercials and film and TV and first thing I said was yeah sure I but you know can I sing and dance that was yeah. still the, the main goal or idea I didn't really understand you know the TV and film <laughs> stuff yeah. per, per se I did but I didn't and this was you know there you know yeah you know you can you know Nintendo and Jordans and stuff like you know kind of trying to sell me on it which they didn't <laughs> have to right like, all right, well, what do I have to do? I was one of those kids that um, I took direction well. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about acting at all. Um, I watched TV. I would remember all the theme songs. I would remember, I would, re you know, so I didn't, but when I started acting, I got my first job on 21 Jump Street. The TV show with Holly Robinson and Johnny Depp. We're not talking about the new Twenty One Jump Street. Right, the, right. The film we're talking about what made Johnny Depp a star. Um, I went to school the next day after telling all my friends to watch it. I still didn't really understand the severity of it, and the response that I got the next day was so overwhelming and, and toxic. What do they call it? Intoxicating. It was like, wow, like you know. I, I, now I know what I want to do or what I'm going to do. And I sat there in class, didn't do any work, and I just daydreamed about the next opportunity. And I couldn't wait to get out of school or, you know, for school or class to end so I can go on the next audition. Mm -hmm. After that, then I became obsessed with watching shows beyond what I had already been doing. Sitcoms all from everything from Growing Pains to Three's Company to Family Ties to Good Times to... Mm -hmm. Uh, Sanford and Son to, I mean, we're talking about just all these shows in the 80s um, that I would watch and hear the rhythms of, mm -hmm. of how the jokes would go, set up, punch, Time. ha, 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 yeah. hold for your laughs. <laughs> all those things I would pay attention to so I could duplicate it when I had the opportunity, not only on set, but even in, in the auditioning rooms. Mm -hmm. So that's why a lot of my work, believe it or not, is television, mm. booking show after show after show after show. Would you consider yourself more of a TV star than a movie star? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because when you look at, that's, yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah. I would you, agree with that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For do sure. you, do you enjoy doing TV uh, more than motion mm -hmm. pictures? <laughs> that's hard because, um, okay, because you, you're dealing with, you have to separate finance from, <laughs> right, right. Ass from but what I would, well, I would assume uh, that you make more doing TV mm -hmm. than, than oh, yeah. motion picture, exactly, because oh, yeah. it's per episode. Yeah. Oh yeah, right. You make a lot of money in film once you yeah reach once a certain you get that yeah right exactly. you know, notoriety. But in, in TV too, yeah. you got to kind of build some juice and muscle, but you're gonna make more money because it's consistent. Exactly. It's each episode, exactly. you're getting a check. It's like. You know, That's right. yeah, you know, you, so <laughs> I, I prefer television. Yeah. But the workload. Well, wait, 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 wait. Monetarily, See, television. Yeah, there you film. go. I'm saying the Mon process, yes. though. But, but, but the film. The workload. The workload. But the film is a lot more gratifying mm -hmm. from a craft standpoint. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. How because so? movies have just a, they exude this, this. This kind of just I don't know um, 
you do a film mm -hmm. and you do it out of sequence and it's all over the place. And uh, when you see the finishing product, whether, whether it's a low budget or whether it's a, a, a major studio uh, a film, and you see it put together from beginning to end, and you remember how you felt with all those moments, even though you did the end of the movie first. Yeah. And it's like, you, you, so, and then to see it put together with music, big, your voice is amplified. Everything is just big right. and it's just right. strong and it's just powerful. It's and it's just like, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just, yeah. wow, you know, <clears throat> and then let alone it be good. Yeah. Now, the opposite, if it's terrible, you're cringing in your seat. Like, <laughs> God, I can't believe I'm in this film. And I, have you done that? Oh, my God, I? have I? <laughs> There's a whole bunch of them. <laughs> really? You want to mention them? No. <laughs> They're out there. You guys can figure it out. Well, people like, but I've had films that I didn't <laughs> like and people yeah. love. Of course. And of it's, course. And it's for personal reasons yeah. and, you know, creative reasons. And, um, but in your TV time, like when you did City Guys, um, did you guys have you ever done TV in front of a live audience, or was that a laugh track and just? I was live audience. Live audience that comes from. See, that's where I come from. Right. I come from live audience. Exactly. Now so, this stuff is here. Yeah. And you don't have that. So what about the immediate gratification of the audience? Oh, that's the great. Yeah. But same thing. Like I said, there's different dynamics. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yes. Because you don't get that in the film until right. the film drops, exactly. and then you sit in the back of a theater and yeah. watch the people in there and how they <laughs> react, which is great in itself yeah. too. But. But then a show is like I said, it's, it's a quick fix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that part is great, the audience, but it's like a half an hour and you're done, mm -hmm. you know, or 26, 24 minutes, I forget mm -hmm. the minutes. But, and it's done. Mm -hmm. Whereas in um, that, okay, again, that film and you hear the music when it comes on, or you know, mm -hmm. like when you see the studio, New Line Cinema pop up, you know what film you're about to see. Yeah. You know, it's just, I don't know, it's just. Let me ask you a technical I I question. I have you done theater? I don't know. Yeah, I've done theater. I theater is similar to television because mm -hmm. it's instant gratification and you got the crowd there and mm -hmm. uh it's scarier because LA yeah. or New York you, where, you where can't go it? back. Exactly. You have to you have to nail it. Yeah. yeah. So it's that's it, what I was gonna that's ask. That's where you. the real real training comes in. That's what yeah. I was gonna ask you because mm -hmm. I did a movie and um and I act like part time, right? But the fact that I had to remember my line and then they gave me a cue, but I had like two or three actions to do. Why oh. doing the line? Oh, and yeah. then, man, when I tell you, I was like, shit. People. I kept, people uh, <laughs> so in live TV, mm -hmm. like you have to hit your mark and you have to know where those yeah. cameras are and you have to be on script, you know? So it's like, I tell people or actors who are new, it's like chewing bubble gum and mm -hmm. walking and talking at the same time. You mm -hmm. don't think about it, you do it. Mm -hmm. You don't want to say, spit out your gum so I can say the line. Yeah. You know, you're going to say it while you're chewing. Yeah. You're going to say it while you're walking. That's stuff you practice, though. But you can't your... improv in TV, though, right? Yeah, you can. You can? Not to the degree that you, you yeah, know, in, like in, you... In movies. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you, you there's a lot... We improv all the time on a lot of the show. Like, mm -hmm. Soul Man with Cedric the Entertainer, we improv a lot. Mm -hmm. City Guys, we improv a lot. I improv a lot of my stuff. Okay. That You know, but you still... You're married to a window of time, and then you're mm -hmm. still married to the writers and the guidelines of mm -hmm. what you're telling about. So... Yes, there is a lot of improv in, uh, for a lot of actors. Mm -hmm. A lot of great work comes from improv. Yeah, especially comedy. So, yeah, you can do it yeah. all that, depending let, upon who you're working with. Let me ask you something. So based on the fact that you, you've you worked with major studios and major platforms, mm -hmm. City Guys was on NBC. Mm -hmm. You did... Um, uh, after that, I did... Uh, right after that show ended, we did four years of City Guys. Right. 104 episodes, something like that. Yeah. Uh, the first pilot season out from ending that show, I got um, my role on What I Like About You, mm -hmm. playing Amanda Bynes' best friend right. alongside Jenny Garth. That was on the WB, which in transition turned to CW while CW, we were shooting. So yeah. that lasted four years, mm -hmm. um, back to back. So uh, mm -hmm. I don't mean to cut you off, what were you about to say? That well, was what I was gonna say, that. and on, on, on top of that, doing the, uh, the, the, the joint with uh, Cedric the Entertainer, the mm -hmm. yeah. So now, fast forward to now that you have a lot of micro budget films and productions mm -hmm. because of streaming now mm -hmm. and technology has changed. Mm -hmm. Do you do you prefer being in that major system of an NBC or do you like this like micro budget kind of, you know, more independent flow? That's interesting too. Um I would be biased and say Cause each has its pros and cons, obviously. They do. Yeah. Um, 
I haven't done enough. I haven't gotten a television series on Hulu or mm-hmm. Netflix or a but regular. But you got all black though. Yes, mm-hmm. um, that's true. Partners mm-hmm. in Rhyme that mm-hmm. um, I play uh, MC Lights mm-hmm. engineer and boyfriend on that show. Mm-hmm. Um, produced and uh, by her and uh, Bentley Kyle Evans. Shout uh, out to Bentley. Uh, yeah, Bentley. Love yeah. Bentley, man. He always <clears throat> takes care. Of, takes uh, care of me. Yeah, but see, goes back to monetary. <laughs> <laughs> Say the me, money, the money. NBC pays better. That's right. Just in my yeah. experience. So, <laughs> so business wise, okay, the machine. Mm-hmm. Uh, but artistically, and and you know, just as an actor producer, do you prefer working with the machine or the independent route? Oh. Independent on a creative and free level. Yeah. But kind of like what Bentley does. Cause Bentley is kind of Yeah, autonomous. Bentley is He's doing autonomous. Bentley is yeah, Bentley's story is crazy. Mm-hmm. I love how I mean, his story in regards to right. uh yeah, having his again exactly uh, having his own I hate to say that, but his own Tyler Perry thing. He does. Going, you know, <laughs> what I mean? he really does, actually. Um yeah. and uh that's the that route is mm-hmm. probably yeah okay gratifying beyond working with right execs. Did you take acting classes? No, I, I my first acting class or workshop. Mm-hmm. I was twenty one. Oh, I'd really? already been in business thirteen. Oh, that's years. crazy. Yeah. Really, and I didn't take it because I I took it for fun. Oh wow! Because it was like a friend of mine, or yeah, I forget what, you know, wanted to just have you come in and yeah. Work with some of the. So, know. how do you prepare for your roles? Well, I don't. It depends on what it is mm-hmm. and how I see it. Like, I don't, you know, I, make no mistake. It's not me saying I, I, I don't need acting classes and, mm-hmm. you know, no, no. We are always. You method can, or are you? No, 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 no. I'm not method. That's that. I, there's some that I, I can't get like that. that yes. Yeah. Even if I wanted to. So, <laughs> so you kind of do what the like the Meisner. Type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aaron Meisner, yeah. But I don't even like I said for me, like, I've, and I've taken workshops and work with you know students and who are you know all about Meisner and uh, method actors and and it works for some people. Yeah. Uh, for me, I mean, we can talk. Well, let me take a, let me talk about. I, I steal. <laughs> what do you mean? I rob. <laughs> now you crunchy black. So I, yeah, yeah, I, I will. Look, you could tell. You could talk about uh, character sweetness. Yeah, we want to talk about sweet. Let's go ahead. Let's talk about yeah. sweet. So because let's uh, do see. this, Johnny. <laughs> well, if we're gonna just bridge off of studying and craft yeah. and how do I prepare for a role, mm-hmm. um, it depends on the weight of it. It depends on. So, for instance, let's just talk about that for an example. A lot of stuff just comes together as it does. I, this is such a long story. I'm going to just speed it up real it's all quickly. Good. Yeah. Roll Bounce was a, a a script that was written. It was fantastic on paper. What happens sometimes is that a casting director that's assigned to to the script, or before Roll Bounce was even sold, to, you know, the studio wanted to even do it. What they do is they'll call actors in. Casting director will call actors in. Uh, that they know they have a relationship with is sit around a table and do uh, a table read mm-hmm. for execs and for those the powers that be to see if they like it. The film is not set; it ain't even got no money behind it. There's nothing mm-hmm. behind it. So we, a bunch of us got the call to kind of sit around, and we all know each other. Um, Taj Maori was called to do Bow Wow's part. Mm-hmm. David Allen Greer was called to do Shia McBride's wow. the father. Uh, you would be you, if I had a camera show you'd be like, whoa, yeah. this is the original people. Right. And then me. David Allen Greer is brilliant, by Oh the way. my God. Go, brilliant. He's brilliant. brilliant. Go um, so then make a long story short, we do the table read. Studio's like, oh, we want to do it, put it on its feet, let's get it going. All right, get a call. You got to audition for roll bounce. Audition. I, I did the table read. What you mean? That's my audition. <laughs> Humble yourself, Wesley. Humble yourself. Go in and do it. So fine, go in and do it. Okay. Gets down to it. The movie is in production. Megan, Bow Wow, 
Marcus Polk, Rick Gonzalez, everybody who's in this movie is already in Chicago shooting. They mm -hmm. haven't cast the sweetness yet. And I'm at the same time, I'm working on my TV show with Amanda Bynes. I'm locked into the WB, mm -hmm. CW, excuse me, at this time. And uh, so I got two, two things going against me. One, I'm locked into a show schedule. Two, this, <laughs> the studio loved me, but they wanted Usher, or they wanted uh, Omarion to play oh, wow. Sweetness. Okay. Probably because of the dance component, I'm assuming. Oh, no, they're mm -hmm. bean counters. Okay. They figure they have it's an the, audience. It's, it's the politics. Audience. Okay. It's just, yeah, you gotta, they gotta, yeah, yeah. Usher is Usher. I mean, yeah. Omarion is Omarion. Right. And both who I love dearly, uh, good guys, um, talented beyond, you know, all aspects, but um, for me as an actor, it's offensive. Here we go again. And yeah. in my position, I'm constantly fighting that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like being that in between. You're not big enough. Right. But you're in that little space, you know, where it's just so it's like, all right, so I'm getting this right. Uh, Malcolm, uh, Malcolm Lee, who directed it, uh, had my back, man. He, he called me and gave me 411. We had a really just, uh, you know, great conversation. And, you know, I'm mad. You know, and he's like, well, why do you want to do this? No one understood why I wanted to do this role. My agents, managers, nobody understood I was fighting for this role to do it. You don't speak in the movie. Uh, you're barely in it. There's a whole bunch of reasons that they could not see. This goes back to what we're talking about training. Could not see what I see. Mm -hmm. So as an actor, I see on paper, he doesn't speak, but he doesn't have to. Right. If he's done correctly, he can say a thousand words with just his face. Right. So... <laughs> I, I, I vented to Malcolm, you know, this is this nonsense, man. I don't understand, you know, I, it, you have Usher against Bow Wow. It's a music video for crying out loud. <laughs> what, are we, what are we talking about here? So I was angry, I was right. extremely mad. I'll never forget how mad I was. Make a long story short, he fought for me. I told, he, he says, well, why do you want to do it? I said, he, he has to be, sweetness has to be funny. <clears throat> you have to hate him. He has to be sexy. He has to be every, Young man, middle-aged or old man wants to be him. Every young, middle-aged and old woman want to be with him. He has to be all these colors. Uh, this, he has to be scary. Uh, you know, uh, he has to have all these things for him to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, all right. Hung up with me. Did what he had to do. Going to bat for me, uh, as well as uh, some of the other people behind there that was helping out. And then I got the role. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, not to mention, here's a film now that I can be with it in, in a film with all my peers and friends. Like I knew, every, we all knew each other. Like right. we we're all friends in this. In this, and then uh, I was mad though. I got it, but I was pissed off. Is all sweetness right. like your alter ego? Like, do you conjure aspects of you for different roles? Oh, like there's different. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, yeah, there's different pieces of him are me. Yeah, there are. There's, yeah, but that's what sure. every. But that's what people don't realize. Like everybody's like, oh, Denzel. Denzel's the same person in every movie. You start to hear that, and it, that, to me, I take. It's a little annoying because mm -hmm. here's a man who's been working for 40 plus years in the game or longer, mm -hmm. and he's done a hundred films or two, oh, 100 films, 600 films or a thousand <laughs> films and projects that we all grew up watching for generation after generation. You're going to see an element of him in right. everything after mm -hmm. so long. This is true. It's just the way that it is. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, he's still he's, a human. He's still yeah, Denzel. Yeah, he's still Denzel. Right, it's just right. like you're going to get some of that. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you, 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 yeah. you know, you live long enough. It's just... Give the guy a break. He's fantastic. Do you like yeah. the stuff that he does? Yeah. Yes. Shut up. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, his catchphrase is "Get your hands yeah. off of me." <laughs> the boy is bad. Take, take. You he just said that want. about five movies. The boy is bad. But I mean, here's the thing. Yeah. So, what did I do? Well, I'm going back to stealing and robbing. Mm -hmm. Sweetness was a combination between Morris Day, mm. John Travolta, okay, Ooh. okay, and Julius Carey, who played Shona from The Last Dragon. Wow. Who had, Kiss my converse. Who I, <laughs> I took, and now I worked with Julius prior to him passing. as playing yeah. his son on a TV show that never made it for Fox, mm -hmm. mm. and I took from those guys mm. and put them in a melting pot, and 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 that's how that's that I got that. So I, when I say I steal and I rob, yeah. I do. I take from from oh, people. That's dope. I take things that I like. It could be a hand gesture. It could be this. It could be yeah. that. So when you say prepare and do all this, well, those are my preparations sometimes. Got you. Then sometimes it's not. I yeah. don't have a clue what to do with it. And 
I can hear how this person sounds or how they should sound. And, and sometimes it's not the right thing. You just, yeah. It's funny that you said you know. Morris Day because in Purple Rain, Morris Day was my favorite character. As a kid, <laughs> I used to mimic Morris Day. But that's what we, that's yeah. exactly, yep. that's Morris Day in Purple Rain. Yep. And even on stage with Jerome, the mm -hmm. whole the mirror thing, that whole yeah. vibe yep. was what you put to it. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, yeah. I, I'm not a. I have a, I have what? a question. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so with um, Row Bounce, mm -hmm. how much of your own skating did you do? 70% almost. 70%? Yeah, but I've, you know, I've been dancing my okay. whole life. Okay. My trainer and double, Mahaja, who was fantastic, mm -hmm. uh, I had six weeks. I trained from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day for six weeks. Mm -hmm. I had to, uh, I mean, I, and that was just what was required. I mean, when I went back to the hotel, I continued that because I wanted people to see that I did most of my mm -hmm. stuff. There were certain moves I just couldn't learn in that amount of time. Right. Kashai Dudley, who was our choreographer, um, you know, was great. And, and I wanted to do a lot of my stuff. So I really went above and beyond yeah. to kind of grab as much as I could. And uh, there was just things that I couldn't do that he would come in and do it on. But I, I he was like, I felt like he was my legs and I was his arms, but. Yeah. Um, Did you take any nasty spills? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah that's part of it. You yeah. had to, you know, but then you got, again, we had by, by, by law or insurance wise, we had to have doubles because just in case we got hurt. Right. Um, you know, there was a lot of falls, man. Mm -hmm. A lot of mm -hmm. blisters, yeah. and, you know, on the feet. Yeah. It looked fun though. It looked fun, especially up there in Chicago because the skate culture is so. Oh yeah, strong. Yeah, man. strong yeah. up there. But I was, yeah, man, it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Working with my, my friends and peers. And uh, when I got there, they all knew, because they knew the drama that was yeah. happening. They yeah. had already been there training. Yeah. So I had to play catch up. Oh, okay. You know? what's, some, what's some funny stories or some hidden stories that no one knows on Roll Bounce that happened that hadn't been told that you can tell? Because there's always shit on, on movie sets. There's always some, some drama or, or, or some funny something going on behind the scenes or... Uh, I'm trying to think, man. Um, I, if I think of something on the way, along the way, okay. I'll let you know. Right. But yeah, I wouldn't say. I mean, it's not the stuff that you want to know. Yeah. But like, I didn't, I didn't hang out as much as okay. I would have liked to. Okay. I was so immersed in the gym. Yeah. And that was the next thing I was, I was going in the to. gym. If I wasn't on skates, I was yeah. in the gym. I was angry. I had a point to prove. What were so so? You got the role. Mm -hmm. You're doing it. You're executing mm -hmm. right, and you're doing a great job. I'm sure everybody's telling you that. Mm -hmm. Why were you still upset? Because of the because of the politics. But the politics is done. You no. you you got it. No, it ain't done. It wasn't done. No, I'm, I'm saying not. in that particular nope. moment. When I that I'm not satisfied. So what did you want? What were you? What I want exactly you? what you saw. Uh huh. That's what I wanted. I wanted you to look at that film and go, who is that dude? Okay. Or if you knew who I was, yeah. and he did that. Or so you so you got that. I wanted, because I didn't make no money from Roll Balance. The money okay. was outside of that. Right. I had to be written out, I had to be written out of an episode of my TV show in order to do it. Oh wow. Okay. But I had to get so you gave so I had to get up. yeah I had to get you know the network <laughs> yeah. to sign off on it. I gotcha. begged everybody. Everybody's like, "What is the big Damn, you was deal?" You was so fighting. I fought. Like yeah. I had to go. Please let me go do this movie. So you almost damn near paid to be in the movie. I did. Yeah, actually I did. Right. My my check was three times of that I made of Roll right. Bounce. Right. I didn't care about the money. It right. was like I said. You said what I'm what I'm mad about respect. Yeah. That's what I was fighting for. Respect me. I am yeah. the real deal, and you fools are going to see it. Everybody. Yeah. From network to studio to right. audience to public, I'm him. Did you stop playing? Did you get the result that you wanted after it? Did you get that response? <laughs> Here's the funny story about that. <laughs> Many years later, yeah, because when the movie dropped, uh -huh. our target audience was the South. It was it was okay. you know it was that you know Louisiana. It okay, was, it was Atlanta. It was Texas. Yeah. It was Hurricane Katrina hit. Oh. All okay. of us were underwater. Well, they were. Yeah. You know, our folks. Mm -hmm. So what happens in theaters? It still did pretty well in theaters, but people mm -hmm. were like, why didn't it come out in theaters? It was in theaters. You just didn't go and see it because 
<laughs> bailing out water. Wow. So it wasn't until DVD, BET, and everything else ran yeah. it, and it was like, yo, this <clears throat> film is great. Yeah. But that respect that you wanted, was it from the audience, or was it from your peers, and was it from the people, the decision makers in, in Hollywood? It's a combination. Okay. So you know you got Combination it to a degree. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because not everybody who makes decisions saw the movie, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But I didn't care. Mm -hmm. that, that was fine. Mm -hmm. But peers already, I already had my peers' respect. Okay. okay. We all, we, I already had my peers' respect. Yeah. Yeah. That was not what I was trying to do. Okay. It was a combination between the powers that be and the public. Got you. Got you. And but, it was also to let people know, too, there was a difference between me and Nick. That's see, true. Yeah. There's a difference. Why like, do you think it's always been that uh, comparison? Because we favor. I yeah. the, I mean, some there's stuff that he's done where I see the profile of him and think it's me. Yeah. <laughs> we no, look alike. Real, you know, yeah. we we used to or yeah. we still do it. Yeah. But and we joke about it, you know. Uh, <laughs> you, know we, you know, he's... <clears throat> I've done that a few times with Tank. I've been on social media. Oh yeah, and I be scrolling. Yeah, and I mean literally when yeah, he did he uh, when he did uh, Drink Champs, <laughs> I went through and I look. I was like, "You use my picture." I didn't, drink I didn't champs. authorize and then I this. I stopped. I was like, yeah. "Oh, that's Tank." I yeah. literally thought it was me. Well, now because yeah, now me and Nick favor. Yeah. We come from the same generation. Yeah, uh, you know, I was around 10, 12 years before Nick. Nick mm -hmm. came out of San Diego. Uh, and he came out during the midway of City Guys. Right. I'd already been getting going. He was in the Nickelodeon he was uh, in the, system. He was system. Yeah. yeah, he was yeah. over there. He, he started mm -hmm. picking up after Keenan and Kel right. yes. coming, coming behind them. Um, so same genre of kids, got you. teenagers. Got you. And so you got two cats that look alike. Yeah. And then he, uh, when he did Drumline, that's when it was. Yeah. I, I, and then they would think that I did Drumline yeah. when I was yeah. over here on my TV. So they, would, they always were, Fusing me and his work and yeah. us together. So here's a film, our first film and last film that we did together, where now you can say, and even people still mix this up, but now you can say, wait a minute, there's yeah. two of them. <laughs> or is it? Right. You right. know what I mean? So yeah, yeah it, in was, my life, it was fun. It was fun doing that. In my life, as I told you before, um, before I grew the beard and I had braids, I was, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Like, you look like Sweetie. You look like the city guy. But then it's dude. not just it's not just yeah. Nick, man. I can go. Yeah. I mean, I, who else? I've gotten people. Jaleel White was my boy. Yeah. I've gotten you know Jaleel. I've gotten Flex over the years. Flex, uh, okay. Flex Alexander. Yeah, yeah. Flex Alexander. Uh, yeah. Miguel Nunez. Okay, that's the homie. He been to the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we used to, I, used to me, I used to get Miguel a lot. Miguel is yeah. crazy. So there's a that's a ton of us that kind of get that you know. I want to go back to something. So what you said when you said when you were doing row bounce, you worked out, you were in the gym a mm -hmm. lot. Oh yeah. Man, so you know, no homo, pause. No, I but your you. physique and, yeah, and as as sweetness was was crazy. Um, what were you doing? Cause your your pecs were so pecs <laughs> right, was right. Popping, right. Well, I would I I was uh at the hotel, I would bench press. Mm -hmm. Where On, were you benching? Heavyweight. Okay. Not heavyweight. It was mm -hmm. I I'm not a person that would go heavy. Me either. I, I would do light reps <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Burnouts, be on fire. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, on set, mm -hmm. if I wasn't skating, then I was doing, people will tell you who were there through mm -hmm. the making of you. I was something that, I was on the side doing push-ups. Oh, you was mm -hmm. getting that pump for the pump, shot? Pump, but just, yeah, yeah. The, the pump for the shot, yeah. but also just to maintain, because the I did it so much, it stayed. Yeah. It was yeah. just, you know what I'm saying? It, it would stay. Yeah. And I was just, and you know, skating or on skates. I would have on mm -hmm. skates doing push ups. Mm. Be what, on my, what was your you diet? Before, I was gonna say. Huh? <laughs> what was your diet? My diet was, uh, I didn't, I, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. I didn't eat too bad. I, I was able to eat, and that's another thing. I didn't eat, uh, mm -hmm. I didn't eat when I knew that I was going to actually, I was. Exactly. Yeah, I wasn't eating. Yeah, because you, no you don't want to hold no nope, water. No you water. them abs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wasn't eating. So prior to <laughs> yeah. shooting, I was like, you know, if I knew I was going in the next day, yeah. I wouldn't eat. Could you skate before? No, I had to learn. That was another, oh, you see, here we go. Stuff that people don't know. When I got the job, when I finally got the job, and was like, yeah, I got it, all right. <laughs> it's on now. Yeah. And they were like, you know, you're to skate. <laughs> oh, gosh, I'm not skate. <laughs> and I got a and I got a I got a week I got a week before they fly me out. Oh my god, I don't know how to skate. What am I gonna do? Oh my god, oh my god. So I went and bought some skates. And I said, How hard can it be? 
<laughs> went out to uh went outside my house and there was this uh parking lot. Man, I got on them skates, man. It was I was like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? So I got there and uh I'll never forget it. My first day of training, I was holding on to the rail. Damn. And panic set in for a second. I was like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? And that's why I said I trained from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day for six weeks. That was my I was the I was the one that was on the skates. Yeah. Yes. So I never left my skates. And that was again just what was required. Yeah. I would take the skates home. Right. Well, to the hotel. Yeah. And be in my hotel room on the rug. Yeah. Still doing the routines. Still doing it. So I would double up. So by the time yeah. you know, it was time to actually do it. Mm -hmm. I had already been on them and I was like, all right, you know, enough oh, to where, crazy. you know, we can get through. You it. look like an avid skater. I mean, even when yeah. you did the little move and then you He was doing it. Yeah. Remember when he, he did <laughs> yep, that to him yep. when he went backwards? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> look like you've been doing yeah. it. Years. Yeah, so we, uh, so yeah, I didn't know how to skate prior to. Okay. Then, Who yeah. did the dance routines, the choreography? Uh, Kashia Dudley. Okay. Kashia Dudley played the lead act, lead girl actress mm -hmm. and dancer in Michael Jackson's "You Rock My World." Mm, okay. You know. Yeah. Okay. So, what was it like working with Bow Wow and with Journey? Journey is uh, another peer who was just dope, man. She's, mm -hmm. Uh, sweetheart, humble, cool, and extremely talented. Mm -hmm. Bow Wow. Uh, my respect level for that film, which to me is his best film to this day, his best performance mm -hmm. to this day, went mm -hmm. went up. Um, I agree. Bow is uh, he was he he was he was busy. Mm -hmm. the, 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 here's the something you don't here you go here you go something you don't know. The scene at the end where me and him were. Going back and forth, yep. you know, I'm the king of here. This flow, you know, he mm -hmm. won't, you know, win, you know, I win, all that, you know, that whole thing at the end. He he did it once or twice on his on his shot, mm -hmm. but he had a lot going on. He was tired when it turned around on me to do my close up and all, all my shots. Um, just like let you know, I told Malcolm, let him go home. Just, mm -hmm. just go home, then and, and he was like, "Man, for real, man, like, yeah, just go, man, go get some rest, whatever the case may be. Just, I need you know whoever to put put an X next to where my eye line, where he would be, mm -hmm. and I'll just do all my dialogue, you know, mm. without him, because now I've already heard him. Wow, yeah, and what he sounds like, you exactly. know, sound a little sweet to me, sweetness, all that. Yeah. I had already heard him because he had done it on his side, right." So if you know filmmaking, which you guys know, you know, you're over here, you're shooting bow, mm -hmm. getting that in, you're punching in a little closer. Yep. Now we turn around, you got the two master. We already did that with me and him. Mm -hmm. So now they're on me. I you don't you don't you're over his shoulder. Yeah. You don't see him anymore. Right. It's a close up, just me. I don't so go home. That's is my eyeline good? Yada yada yada. And just we'll So you didn't even it. have a stand in. It no, was just, you just looking off yonder <laughs> no. and just saying delivering. Yeah, no, we didn't even have standing. Oh wow! Because we didn't really, you know, uh, higher budget films. You're gonna have stand-ins. Right. Mm -hmm. Our stand-ins were our our uh, doubles as a roller yeah. skaters. Got and you. Got you. His he had two doubles, and no, they weren't nowhere. To, I don't even know where they were. So you just had somebody feeding you to feeding you his Every, lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they didn't. It, there was times where I didn't need to have them feed me lines because I. Her, I would oh, just take wow. a beat. I would just take a beat, okay. and you know, uh, you know, you, you know, you couldn't spank me if you, you know, that I would just and I would pause and and oh, do great. one more. I'm gonna go back and watch it tonight. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm gonna go back and watch it tonight. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this: um, being that you've been in the game 32 years, um, what 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 have been your struggles as a black actor primarily? I mean, is it, do you think that it's hard? It's been harder a harder road for you than your white contemporaries. Oh, in terms yeah, of roles. absolutely. And for and, sure. and and to like how is it because the roles aren't there, or is it a pay disparage uh, disparity, or you know what? I don't know about pay pay. Mm -hmm. um, I just think at the time opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, just more projects. Created and driven for, uh, you know, white folks. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think that's what it was, just the level of opportunity. Got you. Um, they only, when you got a white film, you only allow one of us in there. Right. So we're all fighting and scrambling for that one role. Mm -hmm. So I think it was more opportunity in my experience. Has there been any films that you may have declined that you was like, nah, I ain't, I ain't messing with that. But then you saw it and then you regretted it. It was like, oh. Oh, man, oh one. yeah, one of those. Um, No. Um. No, I haven't had one of those experiences. I caught that's yeah, that's like when Will Smith declined on or turned down Matrix and mm -hmm. yeah, no, I haven't had one of those. Mm -hmm. Um I similar to that, I've had ones where <laughs> where I wanted to be in it. Mm -hmm. And I was mad cuz I didn't get get it or get the role or and it, it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. And when I saw it, I was like Glad I didn't get yeah. that. Film. God saved um, you. Yeah, Wanna yeah. Do it? I dodged that bullet. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I've had that. Yeah, yeah. Let me. Uh, interesting question. So recently, um, Anthony Mackie. Shout out to Anthony Mackie. Yeah. He caught he caught some heat with um, apparently a grandmother saw him somewhere at an outing. Mm -hmm. She approached him to take a picture. I'm not hip. Yeah, I don't his... know anything about okay. this. Okay, so, so, so tell me. Know. No, tell okay, me. Okay, so yeah. let me paint it. Yeah. So he was out somewhere. Um, he's off to the side, just vibing. Uh, grandmother approaches him. No, so her grandson first went up to him and asked for a picture, and he declined respectfully. Mm -hmm. She goes back over, was like, "You're not going to take a picture with my grandson," and he's like, "No," he said, "I don't want to do that right, or I can't do that right now." But thank you, I'm sorry. He was very polite, mm -hmm. and so of course somebody's recording it. The cell phone's always out, right? Uh, yeah. Which sometimes it loses context. But anyway, yeah, yeah. um, and so he caught flack from that. And so my thing is with you having celebrity, mm -hmm. um, have you ever, are you, um, do you accommodate your fans like that? Or do you feel like, okay. cause I, I feel like it's a, it's a, it's a trick bag, right? He's still it a is. human being. It is a trick bag. He's still a, a person right. and he reserves the right to That's have right. his space. That's right. Right? That's right. But then there's the other side of, oh, well, these okay. are your fans. So. And so. What would you do, and what is your take on that? And have you ever been faced with that type yeah, of situation? Yeah, I, I, I got a, I got a few, well, few stories, but mm -hmm. uh, every everyone's different, right? There are, everybody operates different with that type of thing. I know Anthony, um, good dude, great actor. Mm -hmm. Me, and just how, again, being a child actor. Uh, not a child star, it's a difference, child actor. I, I, I've had my um, things that have changed the, my per, uh, perception or, uh, of, of that type of thing. When I was nine, 10 years old, when I did 21 Jump Street, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was in that episode. Ironically, he was playing the character named Wesley. <laughs> and this is Lakers, hey day, this is Lakers, Lakers, mm -hmm. you know. So mom, you know, I'm I'm on this, I'm doing a show with Kareem you know, Abdul Jabbar. You know, you can get pen and autographs, so I'm gonna get a, you know, get an <laughs> autograph. I'm in the show with him. Mm -hmm. I'm not coming off the street. Not to mention that not that if I was, would it be any different? But anyway, I'll never forget it. He was talking to this white guy. I tap him on his knee and I look up. <laughs> and uh he's still talking. And I, you know, I asked him for his autograph. And he never looked down to stop for a second and say, hey, man, how you doing, you know? And then sign off and continue. Uh, just that little bit would have changed. Now, at that age, I'm I'm an old soul, and I'm very mature. Like, I'm very, my mom had warned me, like, mm -hmm. you might not want to, <clears throat> you know. Mm -hmm. She did, she warned me. She could read the energy. Well, she just, mm -hmm. she, my, my, my dad was a disc jockey in the mm -hmm. 70s, so they, industry, they, they knew what was, was popping. Mm -hmm. Anyway. He didn't really look at me. He didn't give me, he didn't, he just continued talking to this guy. And it was just like, it was like you were numb to it because you're so big and you've done a million kids. And it's just like, you're not, but for me, that was big as a kid. Mm -hmm. But even then, pissed me off. I had, a, like I said, I have a chip on my shoulder. So <laughs> anybody knows me that. And it made me mad. And I took the pen and pencil back and I walked back to my mom. She said, what happened? I went to my trailer. So he didn't even say hi. You know, and she said, I told you. I was like, well, I was like, I promised mom I, I, when, I, when I get big, I'm never gonna do nobody like that. So I knew how that felt. And so for me, I don't, I try to go out of my way to do that. Mm -hmm. 
We are human. Yeah. People are human beings. They have bad days. Their dog have That's died. Right. Their wives have left them. That's whatever. Right. And where you're in a rush and people are sometimes insensitive to that. Whereas in, I've been in the airport about to miss my flight. Somebody wants to stop and get a picture or whatever. And I'm like, I, I can't, I gotta go. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden you, you know, you're a jerk and call <clears throat> you all kinds of names. Right. Like I'm just trying to catch my flight. Right. So there are points where it's just like, yo, but then for me again, like I said, it takes two seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yada, 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 what? Where, come here, man, what's up? How you doing, man? All right, you good? All right, here we go. All right, have a good one. But what happens is that it multiplies. It does, mm -hmm. yes. So if I do him, I got <laughs> to do, do everybody. everybody so now, because yeah. everybody's like, well, you just do him? Yeah, right. So <laughs> it's a catch-22. It is. It, it, like yeah. you said, it's, it's a trick like bag. <laughs> yeah, so in Ant's defense, and then you don't know the intensity of the conversation he's having with whoever he's mm -hmm. having with. Per the video, <gasps> he was very respectful. He was very. That's yeah. what I'm saying. He's a good dude. Mm -hmm. So he had his I just, reasons. I just interviewed him a couple months ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's a good dude. Yeah. Good. He's very highly intelligent, and <laughs> and but he but he has his reasons mm -hmm. that he didn't. Mm -hmm. I well, what I have done, just on the surface, not knowing the insides, right? I would, especially if he's a kid. Yeah. And I'm I'm Falcon mm -hmm. from you know uh, Marvel. Right. I know how much that means to him. Yes. I'll take it. Yeah, um, I'll take the gamble. Yeah, you know, as far as people, uh, other people was coming and I'm like, yo, you did it for him. Yeah, but that, that he's a kid. Come on, y'all. <laughs> yeah, cut it out. But um, do you feel like they get tired of? Do you feel like with social media, like how we were talking about before, and just the accessibility of people, celebrities? Do you feel like even celebrities get tired of just feeling like a product? Yeah, of course. But th my thing is this: that's what you sign up for. I was just about to ask. You, that. Si <laughs> you signed up for it. That's true. What, are, what are you doing it for? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, when you, well, I, I just do it because I love acting. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> that. That's yeah. the case. Then you just, just go act in the corner somewhere in your own right. apartment and just amuse yourself. <laughs> when I signed up to do it, yeah. that was my whole point. I want to be the biggest, the baddest, the, uh, from yeah. the you know, the star. I, the star you that's what I want. Had, had Give said, it to me. You had said it earlier. You went to school yeah. and saw the response. And I needed mm -hmm. that. Give and, me that. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot me up with that. <laughs> more and more. Yeah, because it, so, it is stop, intoxicating. Yeah, stop yeah. playing. Now, do we get used to it and it gets a little old of course like anything gets old yeah but it's like a doctor saying i want to be a surgeon but don't put blood on me yeah. it's like dude you're gonna get bloody you, right you, you're gonna that's what comes with the territory yeah the adulation yeah. yes and again you're human today i just don't mm. feel like it gosh this doesn't stop you know and then again here we go with levels yeah i'm not at that level where it's like i'll step out my house and paparazzi are popping right. that Right. I, I empathize with it and I sympathize with it because of the measure of the little taste that I do have, mm -hmm. I can tell how that can really jack you up. Yeah. That's funny that you said you know? that because <clears throat> again, as you said, it's 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 all relative. So the little taste, right? Mm -hmm. I was just having a, a conversation with my brother, with Master P, and I was just telling him mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, because of the podcast and social media, you know, is be like my face is becoming more recognizable. Uh -huh. So I say probably about at this juncture, maybe six times out of ten when I go somewhere, somebody will recognize no. me, right? Yeah. But I think because of my history and me being a gangster rapper, former gangster rapper, and and the type of guests we've had on the podcast, mm -hmm. and then being a part of No Limit, my audience is a little bit different, so they're not mm -hmm. so harmless. Mm -hmm. So it becomes nerve wracking <laughs> when people know you and you don't know them and mm -hmm. you don't know their intentions. Yeah, you don't. Because yeah. sometimes I'll get people that yeah. may not know my name, but they'll be looking at me, staring, trying mm -hmm. to figure and it out. Like, That's the worst. And they like, bro, what's up? With you? I know you. I know you. And I'm and I'm like, and then because I do a podcast, so then I'm thinking with. I mean, did I piss you off? Did I have somebody on you didn't like? Right. Did somebody say something about you? And you know it becomes unnerving. Yeah. So I was just telling P, I was like, man, he he deals with it so graciously. Yeah. You know, like he never tells a fan no. Yeah. You know, he always. But you just don't know what people are on. You don't. No. And for me, I've had somebody on social media write to me and tell me that, well, I, I met you at X, Y, and Z, and you were you were you were not nice, and that's me putting it nicely. Mm -hmm. And you were, you know, <laughs> da, 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 da. and I first thing it was a, I think it was a woman too, or a girl. And I asked the first thing I asked in the DM was like. What did you do? Mm -hmm. You know, most people be like, "What? No, no. What did you do?" And she said, "Exactly." She played it back and exactly said it. She said something to the effect of, uh, 
she, I don't know, she, 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 she mixed me up either way, Nick Cannon or somebody else. <laughs> wow. And I said, I'm, I'm going how I, I know mm-hmm. how I am. If I correct you on who I am, and it happens. Hey, mm-hmm. Nick. No, no, no. I'm the other one. <laughs> and, hey, Nick. No, I'm the yeah. one that's not married to Mariah Carey at the yeah. time. And uh, people were like, because I got to do is, nah, yeah, you in disguise. What's up, Nick? What's up? Hey, man, I just told you who I was, man. Yeah. Like, you yeah. Know? So if you mix me up with somebody and I corrected you and you completely ignore what I told you, then you probably you probably got some of that little Hollywood shade. Right. I call it the Hollywood shade. <laughs> you probably got it. Yeah. Knowing me, yeah. if you said something sideways to me or slick yeah. Yeah. and I didn't like it, but off of GP, you coming up to me and telling me that you love my work and you yeah. want to hug or you want to just say hi or this and this and that, nine times out of 10, I'm very cool. I'm very giving yeah. because again, you're the reason why I'm doing this. Right, right. In the end, like that, for somebody to say, I love your work, that's oh, that, that's, that's, that's a, what you that's, were looking for. Yeah, yeah I yeah. love that. If your kid is looking at me like, man, my kid wants to, if you tell me he was, he was a uh, sweetness for, you know, whatever, Halloween, whatever, yeah. you know. That, really? Me? That, that's, <laughs> that's cool. You know, what, you know, in, in the sense of just uh, the admiration. So, yeah. you know, I give, and again, to be in between is the worst. So one thing is to say, hey, that's Brad Pitt. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's Denzel. But when you got somebody that doesn't, because I'm, you know, you know my face, but mm-hmm. you don't always know my name. Every now and then, people you know know my name, and then but my face, and yeah. you're staring at me from every end yeah, of the room, trying to figure it that's out. Nerve wracking. That is, you know, because yep. Anthony Mackie, you gonna roll, you gonna roll up and be exactly. like, "Hey, Papa Doc, Falcon," mm-hmm. you gonna, exactly. you, you know, what I'm saying, you gonna know, mm-hmm. you know. But when people are staring at you, like, is that so and so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like. <laughs> all right, already. Like, yeah. either say hello or don't. Exactly. You know, but you're trying exactly. to find a song you can't remember. <laughs> so, um, different levels of notoriety That's create true. different things. That's true. So, when you get that taste of it, and again, mind you, when I speak to you guys, I'm speaking past tense. Mm-hmm. So, my, ad, my my whole wanting to be the biggest and the baddest was what inspired from t- time I was a child. Exactly. As I've gotten older and I've rubbed mm-hmm. elbows with the biggest. I've been around them or seen yeah. what it can do, what it doesn't do, and just mature. Mm-hmm. That ain't my goal. Mm-hmm. That ain't what I want. I don't care. It's overrated. Mm-hmm. Yada, yada, yada. That's the current, just so we're clear. <laughs> what is Let- your current now? Like, what are you focused on now? What is, what is are you focused on? Joy, peace? Oh. Different <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, there's a, yeah. Uh, my family, mm-hmm. uh, my faith. Mm-hmm. Uh, still Jehovah's Witness. Still one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay. Uh, uh, and trying to navigate through life the best way I can. Um, the industry and the entertainment field is is not even secondary. It's down on the list. Mm. Um, I've done it for so long, and I've given it. I've given it a lot of me enough. Do you still find that same joy and that same? No. Oh, so you don't get the same gratification that you got starting? No. Well, what, what, what do you mean? And what, like, does you- it, like, from the space of you as a kid watching Michael Jackson and wanting to be a star, mm-hmm. and now that you've become that, do you still have that same zeal for it? No. You- no. Quick answer. Okay. I've had a measure of success. Nowhere near what I imagined or wanted. I can identify past. with Not that. Not even remotely close. I've I, only cracked the surface. I can identify. I've watched with my that. peers pass me. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've watched. Um, but but, you know, but but let's be fair. Do do I do uh, I get do I now, now again, I'm not gonna let you do that. Let's be fair though. Mm-hmm. You have an accomplished career. You you no, have a no, solid for career. No, for sure. No, I no no. no okay. Granted, yeah, I ain't gonna but, let you do but that. But see, but see, where people when I dreamed, yes, I understand. I, I identify didn't see with that. One yacht. I saw ten. <laughs> I got you. When yes. I saw yes. me as a kid saying, "I want a Rolls Royce," not one. Gotcha. I want a twelve car. Levels to I it. saw that. Yeah, it's level. So, to it. so at this where I'm at, it's like, oh man, you didn't get nowhere near you wanted to get. To, what What do you, you know? think is keeping you, or has kept you from getting to that space? My own self, partially. I take accountability. Uh huh. Me. Um, In what way? Just I'm, my personality, man. I'm okay. not a. I'm not a brown noser. Okay. Uh, I'm not a smoozer. Uh, me neither. <clears throat> me neither. I can't stand the red carpet. <laughs> 
I can't stand the parties and stuff and the thing. I just don't like it. I did it and do it, or I should say did it because I felt the need to have to do it. Um, You're not for the politicking. Yeah. No, I don't like it. I can't <laughs> stand you. it. I'd rather have done a movie or a film that exploded into a different stratosphere mm -hmm. and then it and things happen the way they happen. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to just hit the hit the, 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 the circuit and bounce around and yeah. Mm -hmm. I just I have, I I'm antisocial. I feel you. Me too, heart. brother. Me heart. too. Me too. I've learned to be social. Yes. yes. But I like to be in the corner and just do my job. <laughs> and just, and just, go I did home. it. Yeah. That, that's go home. <laughs> yeah. That is yeah. me. So, that's her too. So yeah. I a part of it is me. Yeah. The other part is politics. Okay. Um, when then, you say politics, I mean because I mean you're a nice guy. You so and that's the other part of it. The fact that you have but but the, but the but the game chooses who they want. Man. That's true. That's true. Because you I, haven't I, been involved in any controversy, no BS. No, like I, I try to. I, I mean, I try not to. Yeah. I, don't, I don't. You know. You know. I don't. Yeah, I try not to. Right. I right. mind my business. Exactly. Um, I'm not. Again, I know a lot of people, right. but I don't ask, and I probably should for favors or to. My my family used to say, man, you 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 rub elbow. Why don't you ask someone so? I'm not asking nobody or nothing. I just you know what I'm saying. Just do I the just, work. Yeah. yeah, just do the work. If they if they see fit that I'm. <clears throat> You know, uh, good for the role, or they, yeah. you know, then, then, you know, so be it. But I don't know, man. I, I then the other, the third part to me is a, uh, is a, is a spiritual thing for me. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, especially now, you know, I'm not jumping to, you know, do anything. Mm -hmm. So there's certain roles I'm just not going to do. Got you. Certain things I just won't do, and I think that. If I compromise, uh, if I compromise, then I probably will pl pl pass a plateau. I feel you. I yeah, feel I don't you. you understand I feel that. everything that you're saying. So if I compromise and it's like, yeah. oh, thank you, now the door will open for you. Got you. I won't compromise. And I haven't, even in, in the days when I wasn't active in my faith, mm -hmm. and uh, there were certain things I just wasn't going to do. I was so just I, about to ask have, is there a role that you have done that you wouldn't do today? Yeah. Looking back, oh, it's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, even like the sweetness character, like if you to no, I do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, because yeah. because well, I mean, yeah, I, sweetness was, was was neutral. He's a yeah. villain. I yeah. mean, yeah. but he wasn't even like you know, I, right. yeah, it wasn't anything. The, the Roll bounce is a kid friendly film. Exactly. You know yeah. what I mean? You could take that, which is why I love it. Is you can take your fan. You can, it reaches every different That's right. know, age group. I don't know that I've seen you do anything hardcore yeah, or salacious or yeah. Something like there's that. there's very there's very little. Yeah. There's some stuff in there that you know every now and then you're like ah. I was would. that intentional or you just <clears throat> weren't well, well, again, asked to do stuff like well, that? Well, again, uh, no. Um, but uh, no, for the most part, it was intentional mm -hmm. because again, of my foundation and my upbringing. Yeah. Um. But then there was also the fact that oh well, I look the way that I look. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't place me in yep. that. You know, yeah. I don't have I know that, that struggle too. That thug, yeah. gangster yeah. Ex exterior. So that's I was like, ah, I won't put gets. him in there. Uh, <laughs> that's the only roles he gets. But that's yeah. now though. Yeah. Like, that's now. Like before I would, before I grew a beard and got muscles, it was like, yeah. you know, I was like 28 playing high school characters. Yeah. You know so they, I mean? so that I would never, you know, get <laughs> gang cash for those things, <laughs> you know. Yeah. However. Um. However, to me, I, I, I to me, I, you know, um, I can play those. Roles. Yeah. Uh, because again, there's a, if you haven't told, there's a mean streak in me. Yeah. That yeah. I can go there. <laughs> there's an edge to you there's that a, I yeah, didn't expect. Saying, like, that I like, didn't it, expect. It, right. I the, thought you was gonna show up as Jamal as no. as city guy. No. You know what I mean? <laughs> the, 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 yeah, and that's the thing. It's like so. It's there, but yeah. it, again, people are about. Exterior and they're about your past work. Yeah. So if you associate me with teeny right. bopper, and then you're cute exactly. and you're a cute guy, and you're a teeny bopper, yeah, yeah. then it's like I hey, can't play no thug. You right. Know, you push mm -hmm. him to the side. Um, now let me just say to mm -hmm. the audience, to the watching, when he came in and his energy, and when he gave me a pound, I almost wanted to search this dude. I was like, man, he got, he got a strap on him. His energy way different. <laughs> he walked over here. Was real he walked over here like West Side. I'm like, okay. I told you all, my mom is from East St. Louis. We from Kansas City. Okay, yeah. so if you don't know what yeah. East St. Louis is at, do your homework. You know what I'm saying? So my mom is very, very like. Influential in my who I am. Uh, let me ask you this: So, how have you been able to to uh, balance 
you know, marriage life mm. with the entertainment industry. And uh, like, for instance, mm. being so, you, you strike me as someone that's very private and keep your business out off the media, keep your family and your yeah, marriage life. Yeah, try to. So, like, how we see Jada Pinkett, but how she kind of does, um, you know, I think sometimes people overshare. Um, do you think in this day and age that's helpful? You know, because sometimes people use that as, oh, I'm just trying to give my testimony. I'm trying to help people and I'm trying to tell my truth. Or is it just talking too much? Or I think, do you think it's best to keep you private like you do? And I, that's how you've been able to maintain. I think it's best. To, I think I think it's best to keep things private, certain things private. Mm -hmm. um, especially your relationships. And I'm For talking sure. about romantic relationships, For sure. marriages, girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever. Because I have a problem with and don't everybody take offense to this, but I don't like when, and I never was that person. If I got a, at a time prior to my marriage, if I was involved with a girl, I didn't at least purposely put her on my social media and brag about, mm -hmm. look at my new girlfriend. <laughs> it's like self-sabotage. I just love her to death. I've been dating her for two months. I just love her. She just, that's my rock. That's my... It's like self-sabotaging, <laughs> and then two months later you break up. Now all the pictures that you've seen yeah. are gone. Yeah. It's like, and then you got another one. And since it's routine, I can't take you seriously. Protect that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Build a foundation mm -hmm. to where it can't nothing knock it down. Mm -hmm. If it's you know what I mean. So, but some some people don't have that luxury. It's just not. Uh, there's certain people that just care <clears throat> about everything you do. Yeah. And then there's certain people you just don't. But then you know? if you look at Jay-Z and Beyonce, right? There can't be a couple more high profile, right? But Outside they're not, of- But they're not, yeah, yeah they're not you, loud with their No, stuff. you just know they're together. And that's what's- that's, We have no idea what's going on in that relationship. And that's what keeps- <clears throat> Well, until that. the elevator incident, and then you're- well, And that was yeah. a camera, you told them. But you got you got a- You wouldn't know that but, if the camera wasn't Right, there. but you're gonna, again, they can't, you can't hide everything at right. that magnitude, mm -hmm. but they do a great job at that magnitude by exactly. being quiet and being yeah. still. And that's why it lasts. Exactly. Prime example for me is Method Man. For sure. You don't hear nothing. This man has been married over 20 years. Exactly. Uh, Longer than that. Yeah, He's been with yeah, her forever. Yeah, forever, yeah. forever. So I respect this dude and I respect <clears throat> her because he, she ain't around talking about, you know, yep. show me around. You know, make, exactly. make sure you show me. No, 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 no. Yeah. She knows who she is. She knows her position in his yep. life and she knows the value and she knows that this protection of this unit is far more important than trying to be seen and be... You yep. know, that's uh, how my wife is. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and Snoop too. Snoop yep. been Snoop, prime Snoop, example. Snoop been so yes, there are to me things that like that need to be protected from the public because they will again tear you apart and look for any reason to do so. Um, and I'm very much like that. Like I can put my wife up every now, every once in a blue moon, you'll see a little a glimpse of you know her and me and, and the kid, or you know what I'm saying. But yeah. for the most part, I and then people think they they look at it negative. You're trying to hide something. No, I'm not trying to hide exactly. anything. I wanted to post. Anything. I wanted to post my wife for her birthday. She didn't want me to. Yeah. She was like, "No, nah, 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 you know, that. I ain't here like that." Yeah, and that's and it. typically that's what you know. And 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 so with the, with Jada or whatever, and the, the other aspects of how you know, mm -hmm. okay. Sometimes people have told me, "Wes, you need to do a podcast." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I want to transition to what we were talking about before we started. So mm -hmm. you being, again, 32 years in the game mm -hmm. and actually having talent and actually having a resume, mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on the social media stars of today and just the whole climate of social media creating, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I guess attention is the new talent, is the new currency. Yeah. You know, how have you adjusted uh, to that and, and do you respect it at the end of the day? <laughs> Yes, I respect it. Uh, is that the PC answer? No, I, I, I'm not done yet. Okay, okay. <laughs> go I'm ahead, sorry. Let me let you go. <laughs> so, social media, or social media is not my issue, per se. Well, yeah, I don't know, it's not. I don't know if it's an issue, but here's my thoughts on, <clears throat> uh, what do you guys, what do you call them? Uh, influencers. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see how he looked over the top yeah, of his glasses? See, yeah, you looked over <laughs> He looked <All> right. <laughs> Influencing what? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, right. 
All right. So influencers who are, I guess, I guess I can say I'm friends with some people or associates with some influencers. I respect it on the level of get it, how you can get it. That's right. Who am I to knock it? You were, mm-hmm. you were, you were brought up or you were, you were, you came into an era like this. Yeah, you're supposed to grab onto it and roll. Mm-hmm. For us, we have to adjust to it, That's adapt right. to it. Like I'm very mm-hmm. not tech savvy. Me neither. I'm very like my I feel like I'm my, my, like parents or grandparents. Mm-hmm. Like, what's that? Mm-hmm. You gotta do what with the micro bits in the in the in what how many <laughs> you know, gigabytes in the you know, I don't I don't know any of that. So I'm very computer, which is another issue of mine. But anyway, I respect it. I but I but to and there's some some talented like I said there's some talented funny like great definitely. people I, I've seen definitely. it I'm like who is that person they're hilarious definitely so there's a measure of respect there's a measure of um, I, I just don't like it because it's just it's so it's like watered down it's like everybody can do it mm-hmm. so then therefore <clears throat> if every we, what do we have now yeah it's just. If everybody can do it, it cheapens it. It's, there yeah. you go. It, cheapens it takes the value it takes away, the from, value it. away so from it. So it's like you're just like this person. You're just like yeah. that person. It's a copycat, copycat, and it's just over. It's just oversaturated. <clears throat> reality TV prior to the social media, the levels are now. Reality TV was my issue back in the day when it first was beginning. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, I would. There were certain reality shows that I would watch, but. It began to be to me just another like okay. I, I didn't like the fact that you could watch stuff like um, VH1's Flavor of Love, yeah, like, mm-hmm. for instance. Mm-hmm. And flavor, 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 flavor. But you have all these women in there, and when the show is over, you have these women now, or some of them, put in films. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! What are we right. doing here? Right. <clears throat> What's going on here? Right. <clears throat> so we got to see, you know. That's that's kind of crazy, like because they're being themselves on Flavor Flav. Right. They're just you know amping it up, and people yeah. are like you know. But then all of a sudden you're going to put them as a, you didn't give her a role and put her in this movie. <laughs> yeah, ain't or that they crazy? Got their own TV show. Yeah, yeah, they, got yeah their- they got their spinoffs and stuff. And it's like, is that crazy that you could actually lose to a person for a role that's who what has I'm a million followers that's just because they have popularity? It, that's, that there's there's yeah. the the but I mm-hmm. respect, but right. Because this person has two million followers and I got 175, but my resume exactly supersedes Deep. you. Yeah, yeah. And if you stood toe to toe with me, you couldn't hold your candle to me. And other, you know, it's just. But then there's the like I said, there's the actor in me. There's the yeah. there's the the old, you know. But so, you know, get it how you get it. I ain't, I ain't I ain't mad at you. I ain't hating you. But in the end. <laughs> it's bubble gum. You, you, so, you, you know. So we come from a world where, again, like we were speaking before, where just to contextualize it for the viewers, because mm-hmm. you know some of the millennials and uh, what is it, just Generation Y, they're gonna be like, yeah, oh, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I understand. We come from a world where you know when we we loved Michael Jackson, Prince, we loved Sammy Davis Jr., we loved all these people mm-hmm. because they could do something and you didn't at have, a high level and you that no one else and could do. And you didn't have tricks and technology to yeah. make your voice sound this way or make yeah. your voice sound that way. They it's really had auto tune and everybody sound yeah. like they just getting up in the morning, and <laughs> yeah. going to the studio and just say anything and it don't rhyme. It's off beat and all of a sudden it's like oh it's a great song and then it's like. <laughs> Y'all got this thing right now where if it's if it's vulgar, if it's nasty, mm-hmm. the more P words and F words that you yeah. say, and the the, the, the greater the, the the better the song. Yeah. What is that? Yeah, like you can't get your point across better than that. I mean, I don't. Again, well, I'm not trying to. You know, when I say but, that, I, I mean some. I'm really pointing the finger at the females. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Okay. So you're not a fan of sexy red. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a fan of sexy red? Who, me? <laughs> Man, listen. I just, found out, I just found out who that was. And guess what? I found out who that was by social media. Yeah. Uh-huh. Because there was a guy talking about he couldn't understand why this. this I don't, like I said, every time I see sexy red, I just, I don't know. I just feel like I just want to. 
just pop an antibiotic just after listening. To I it. don't. I take it's just like who can be the nastiest? Yeah, we're about to get the old comments. Yeah, about yeah. To yeah. Cut. I know, I, and I know they, and, I, and it makes them mad out there, and the youngins mad. I guess I am old, but well, let, I let mean, me, but what about little Kim? Because that's like well, no. Let me contextualize. I mean, yeah, I guess. Hold, about, on, hold yeah. on, no, no. So this is the thing, because you know I come from the rap game. Mm. The thing is that the, the difference is with Sexy Red and Little Kim to me is social media plays a part in it. Okay. So I'll tell you why. <clears throat> Little Kim, there's still you could still differentiate the art from the person. So Little Kim would do all her salacious That's uh true. you know uh content, her music. But when she got on the red carpet or she was in interview, she can comport herself yeah. as Kim yeah. and say, "Okay, that's a part of me. That's my thing." Yeah. But now when you have your Sukihanas and your sexy reds and I'm not I'm not hating on them, but now they are portraying like, no, that's not just the music. That's who I am. They don't turn, and that's, they don't turn yeah, it they off. Turn off. And this is who I am yeah. in interviews, on the red carpet, yeah. and then on social media. So now what happens is it's cool. that If that's what you are and that's what you want to portray, but my thing is tell the whole story. So mm. when you're saying, when you're you're promoting this baby daddy culture and this mm. my baby daddy in jail and I send him money and this, that, and the other, tell the whole story. That's cool. But say, hey, that's what I do. Hard though, because I got to take care of these kids by myself. I have to send him money. Mm -hmm. I have to always be available to him with collect mm -hmm. calls. When you talk about she's the raw dog queen, okay, that's cool. <laughs> say that. Fishy. No, say that, right? Hell yes. That's a, wait, that's a real lyric? Yes. yes. Oh I'm not God. making this up. I don't know. I'm not I'm making this up. I'm the so raw when dog. you when you say that, <laughs> right, and you oh trivialize God. catching STDs. Tell the whole story. In the era of super gonorrhea. Exactly. It's super gonorrhea. <laughs> Say how. You know what? I'm the raw dog right. queen. But right. when you catch these things, Hold on. you can mess around and be sterile, and they yeah. make you susceptible De to Devil's other Devil's advocate, diseases. though. Devil's advocate. Devil, go ahead. Be the devil. Social media just didn't exist. In, in the era yes. of Lil' Kim. No. And, and, hold, wait. Hold on. Go ahead. And if it did... Would they have taken advantage of the fact that they could instantly tap into well, the audience? If it was a fifth, then we all be. If it was a fifth, we all okay. Be let me I mean, let me let me saying? let me interject this for just a little something because I'm not the guru of it all. Again, I'm. I, when I go back to Lil Kim and I go back to the brat, mm -hmm. and I go back to Foxy Brown and just the women in that era, uh, and we, we can go way back and go. Queen Latifah, right. MC Light. We can go further and further back. We just yeah. watched the evolution of the 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 the, the grit. Yeah. And Kim, and Kim was the first to step out to take it to the next nastier level. Yep. Yes. However, when you can when you separate Lil Kim's racy lyrics, mm -hmm. you also can look at how creative and dope she was. Yep. Outside of that, so whereas in even still, the skill was dope there. That's right. Like now, it's just like some exactly. old kindergarten. Yeah, that's right. Pump, dump, that's trunk right. yeah. in the butt. Like it, it's like there's no creative <clears throat> element yeah. to it. And there's no, there's no, there's no, it's there's just, no skill. There's, there's no, no skill talent. in there. Like yeah. at least finesse it to where it's right. like it's you know what I mean. <laughs> but just yeah. no, just straight up, just yeah, you know. Yeah. And the thing is, is I'm not hating. Like like and I I'm get not it. Either. And, and I some just, of and listen. I ain't gonna lie, Sexy Red, her beats, her beats be jamming, right? I haven't heard of And I can it. see some of the stuff is catchy, but I think what, what we're speaking to is balance. It's you know, just, cause back just, in the day you had balance. Little Kim, but then you also had Lauren Hill, you had Queen Latifah, you had, it's the same, and it goes the same way with the guys. Yeah. I don't wanna just pick on the girls. So even with the drill rap, I love NBA like, Young Like to Boy. me, I, I gotta say the brat again, because mm -hmm. the brat, you, if you go back and listen to her stuff, the brat didn't. She was all about like she didn't right. play off the the the, the, yes. the female thing, right, you know, right. like the thing, the right. thing. And it's just like you gotta get credit with credit to do. This, this, she's rumbling with dudes, yeah. you know what I'm saying? On the level of that, and it's like to me, it, it can be done. Okay, you have your little song about yeah. your little, you know, little, but then every song you got, you yeah. got to be every, every song. And they push the envelope. It's like, how nasty can I That's get? That's what I'm trying to tell I mean, you. It's a, got... matter, it's a matter of who can be the nastiest. <clears throat> yeah. But and, yeah. I, mean, I think that they have that, though, because you got like Young M.A. and other women mm, right. who are trying to be lyrical. Uh, no, no. Just one. You just named her. Name somebody else who's not projecting this overt. I mean, we're about to so, have another one on the podcast who was not. No, but I'm talking about current. 
Oh, I don't listen to a ton <laughs> That's of what I'm saying. Rap. Everybody, but, but, I, but I have like, to imagine. Prostitute I, culture is. I don't know. You're yeah. younger. There's, I have prostitute to imagine. Prostitute culture. <laughs> yeah. yeah that hey, I, I, just, I just look at it like I think a Trina who was right I'm behind Kim. Current, no, no, no. I'm saying. Yeah. I think that there's just the women who said like all the dudes. Because the guys are already yeah. doing the same. I don't know. And you're by the, the only oh, woman on the panel. So. Make no yeah. mistake. When I'm right now, we're talking about the women. That does not mean I excuse the fellas. <laughs> exactly. Make no mistake. I don't. I don't get tired of hearing them too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just every, everything coming out their mouth, right. where it's just like, "Yo, dude, chill. lyrics literally are all ah skeet skeet skeet." <laughs> it's so just you yeah. being the, and that's the a club player. banger. Okay. That yeah. one's so, played in the club. So she's a millennial, and this is your somewhat because <clears throat> you're kind of about to be the old chick. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be the old chick. Yeah. So, <laughs> so go ahead. What, what is your yeah. thought on it? It's, well, it's different for me because. It is, well, I think it just depends on your experience. So, yes, I am. I'm about to be 31. I raised you so, on gangster. Go yes, ahead. I'm a 90s baby. So, same like how we were talking about technology. I'm that generation that we, I grew up without it. And then I too was introduced to it as a child. Mm -hmm. You know, like I remember getting an iPod. I didn't get a phone until high school, mm -hmm. whereas now they have phones in elementary. Like they're coming out the womb, yeah. you know, yep. swiping. So, and then I was also raised in the Bible Belt. And then I also had a father. And then I also had a father that was raised, you know, yeah, raised me on gangster rap. And then he was also a gangster rapper. Yeah. So he would always explain to me and kind of contextualize, like, listen, this is entertainment. I've always had that entertainment, real life, entertainment, real life. And then with my mother also being so private, mm. so um, reserved as well. Mm -hmm. For me, I can look at it objectively and say, okay, this is entertainment. Now, do I think it's too much sometimes? For sure. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say that is because I do think now, because social media has made everybody and everything so accessible, there is a level of, I'm going to just say social responsibility that I think mm -hmm. everybody should just kind of impart upon themselves because what you say, what you do does have an impact it on does. people. You know, children are watching. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, people have to like, oh, them, them, your kids is your, your business for sure. Like what you expose your kids mm -hmm. to is your business. Like Cardi B, she doesn't let her own child listen mm -hmm. to her own music. Yeah. And I do understand subconscious programming and just how incessant it is. Yeah. So I think it's a balance, you know, now do I think can grow folk listen to whatever they want to, you know, do? Yeah, for sure. But mm -hmm. I don't think we can remove the social implications that all mm -hmm. You know, just I agree. The drill rappers too. Yeah, with all too. of it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the male and the females. Yeah. By the way, I had to look up the list of current rappers that are female. <laughs> the ones that are lyrical don't get don't get mm -hmm. the shine. They don't so get the Snow the product. And that's La what Latina rapper from LA. Right. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Rapper. And it's frustrating. Nobody really tunes into and that's her. That's what stuff. happens. Nikki. I mean, Nikki wasn't really. That's she, true. she was not. Nikki was yep. lyrical yes. as. Shit. That's right. And yes. as soon as Cardi came out, yep. yep. had to get nasty. It, yeah, she yep. had to change it. Yep. And then you could go through, you can go through the list and yeah. just look at it's frustrating. Yeah. And and, and, like, and, and and for me, then you gotta blame now consumer. Coy Lare. Yep. Yeah. Which I, yep. why y'all, you know, why y'all yep. so drawn to this, exactly. this nastiness? Because they only do all they're doing is looking at the numbers. Okay, you, that's I'm, right. So in their defense, it's like, all right, well, shoot, you guys want to hear that. This is what we're gonna give you. Going back to what you said, mm -hmm. there are people who can't differentiate between entertainment. And not mm -hmm. they fuse the two, and then you know again you start to hear the as Bill Cosby says Phil Florin Phil Phil Florin Eddie Murphy Phil, right. <laughs> Eddie Phil, Murphy. Flying, Phil Florin Phil, Phil yeah you start hearing that constantly you do become numb to it mm -hmm. you know you, you know when I when I, when I you know now too just being so kind of getting older and just I don't mm -hmm. listen to that kind of stuff anymore or try not to if it doesn't cross my on purpose on my table. Mm -hmm. um, I hear I hear some of these phrases and I'll be ouch. Oh <laughs> you know, you on the radio, you know, they yeah. they'll let certain words slide through, yeah. you know, ho. I had my my daughter <clears throat> sitting there minding her own business and the word ho slid through there somehow, some kind of way on the radio. And she just at nine years old. Dad, what's a ho? <laughs> oh God. <laughs> like, why are you zooming on that? <laughs> what's a ho? Because yeah. she had heard it, I guess, a few times. Uh -huh. It was like, why do you keep saying that? So I had to explain to her what a ho was in the most how did you do that? <laughs> what was your definition? Oh, I told her. I said, I said was well, <laughs> I said, you see how, uh, <laughs> let's say, uh, um, mommy and daddy are together, right? She's like, yeah. I was like, we're married, <laughs> right? I was like, okay, now, if you took a, a, a man or a woman, I said, and that man or a woman, right, uh, 
show affection to a lot of people <laughs> for a lot of money. <laughs> That's a hole. Does that make sense? <laughs> she says, oh. <laughs> I'm sitting there going, God, see, if it wasn't for, da- for this dang radio, I wouldn't even have to, you know, but it, yeah. it, 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 she's going to have to learn yeah, sooner or later. Yeah. But that was the most respectful way that's, I could have explained that's you know. that's that's a viral clip right there. It is that's hilarious. hilarious. <laughs> I, was like, I was trying to navigate like, yeah, you know, and I didn't like, I didn't just I didn't leave it to just women. I said men and women. You know what I mean? Let her know it goes both ways. You so know. let me ask you something real quick, because you know, uh we, we do like to talk about a lot of uh hip hop here. Real quick, what's your top five? Rappers? Dead or dead or alive. Dead or alive. Oh, you guys, that's like the most Come on. Now, did it to now me respectfully, too. if you because you because I understand we're up in age, respectfully. If it's it can be older, if you can have two oh, it's gonna have to older go. or yeah. new or whatever, Top however you want to do it. Yeah. Dead or alive. Dead or alive? Yeah. Oh God. It, it, it. It's gonna change too. Yeah, I'm gonna get in the car and go. No, I right. changed my mind. You just gotta rattle them off. We've done it a handful of times here. You 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 a West Coast native, so I would I, Snoop. Top five <coughs> rappers. Nah, because much as I love Snoop, I wasn't I, I, lyric wise, lyricist wise. Mm-hmm. Snoop was a. Uh, Snoop wasn't, uh, I won't say deep. Mm-hmm. Well, I will say it wasn't like deep to me. Like it was yeah. like, it, his his stuff was like. I got you. He was you know, a vibe. Smooth. Yeah, it was yeah. a vibe. Like, I, yeah. don't get me wrong, I love Snoop and the whole, you know, but it wasn't like he was like, mm-hmm. made you think like, ooh. Oh, so you're a lyrical guy. That's, yeah, I kind of like okay. that, you know, deep stuff. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, uh, KRS-One was always I was gonna say, dope. you sound like an East Coast dude now. KRS-One <laughs> was dope. Uh, okay. Rakim was dope. Okay. Um, I like Biggie, like Biggie was dope to me. Pac was to me, a great storyteller and passionate. So when he rapped, I felt him. Mm-hmm. But I like, I like when I like when I like when MCs do phrases that are like that make mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying that are catchy. Yeah. Like they say things that are kind of like, oh my gosh, that's yeah. it, it create. I don't, you know what I'm saying. I, yeah. And I don't, I don't have my top five of all time. Oh, man, that's so hard to do. We'll come back to it. That's you, so hard you can to do. We'll have you. We'll have you come back to it's the show. A, and then it's right. like, I don't like those kind of those are trick back questions because then they have a bunch of people hating. Oh yeah, for like, sure. Well, well, I was saying, I was saying, I was saying, I was saying, you were in the car though back then. Who, who's the? Wait, we say that, wait. If you're in the car back then, forget top five. Who, who's on? Who's regular? Uh, back in the, back in the day when I was out, mob deep. Uh, okay. As far as a group, mm-hmm. you yeah. know, yeah. Uh, what was in the playlist on a regular basis? A CD track. Who's you burning? When you had them old <laughs> six disc changers. Yeah. Oh yeah, remember them? Oh, I had I had Bone Thugs and Harmony. Bone Thugs. Yeah. Yeah. I, had, I had Bone Thugs. How do you know yeah. I was gonna say that? Yeah, yeah. I had from bone, the same generation. Yeah, I'm, I had yeah. Bone Thugs in there for sure. Remember man. when you used to have to go to the trunk to change the six oh, out? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I had the CD booklet. Oh. Yeah, I had the CD booklet too. That Mob Deep, uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Uh, Mob Deep is dope. Story ghetto Mob Ghetto Deep, Boys. Oh uh, uh, yeah, I had ghetto, ghetto Boys. I had some Ghetto Boys. I had a E40. E40 is dope. See, that's yeah, E40 yeah. is dope. You yeah. know what I mean? Um Beanie Siegel. I love Beanie, but I didn't have any of Beanie Siegel. Yeah. But I I respect him as a as He a said rapper. big. We heard yeah, big. big. Yeah, I thought Big was dope. Um I think we got his five. Mm, yeah. Pretty much got you five. guys, you guys <laughs> mingle it how you want. KRS one, <laughs> yeah. rock him. Yeah. Big. yeah. Bone thugs like, and bone harmony. Thugs. All right. So real quick, lastly, I want to ask you thoughts on the uh, the SAC going thing going on with the union and SAG, the strike. What are your thoughts? And um, I think I know the answer, but just for the listener, for the viewer, um, what are they fighting for? Do you feel like that the actors um, are and the writers? Do you feel like they have a, a a point? Is it unfair? Is the business really bad for you guys like that in terms of pay, especially with streaming and Video gaming and all this other stuff. I mean, we all know it's always about money. Yeah. So it's you know point to get into. It. It's just it's always about money. But <laughs> yeah, um, that these everybody these 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 
see, the streaming thing is new for me. Mm -hmm. Again, here we go with technology and how right. it works and all that other stuff. But I know from just the beginning of time, studios always make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So at the trickle down, it's like, y'all got plenty of money. Stop being greedy. Stop being greedy. And share. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, well, yeah. and as I understand it too, with streaming, it there's just no transparency in what like there's no it's, baseline. It's, it's, yeah, there is no. It's it's kind of vague. It's yeah. a, it's a very kind of gray line because even like with residuals coming from the internet or like mm -hmm. like what is that? You know, right. you, it, it's really hard. Yeah, there's no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. There's no mm -hmm. real line because I got like a ton of stuff that's out there on, like I said, Netflix, YouTube, and then, you know, YouTube, YouTube, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, and it's like, well, you know, do we get paid from that? Like, yeah. How does that work? You know what right. I mean? Like, I'll get a check from this network or that network yeah. and from Switzerland. And, you mm -hmm. know, but what's this internet thing? And <clears throat> where is it? You know, it's just, yeah, it's very weird. I don't, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still not really all hip to mm -hmm. that part. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I do know that there's a lot of money that, that, that's, uh, that should be dished out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so it, what, it, 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 it'll, it'll come together. What um what new projects you have coming out? What do you have currently? Well, because of the well, prior to the strike, I was working mm -hmm. on or um, second, third season, mm -hmm. uh the TV show we talked about earlier, Partners in Rhyme, mm -hmm. uh with MC Light. Um, that's on All Black, right? That's on All Black. Shout out to Brett. Yeah, All Black, and then what else I got going on? All Black. I got a movie with me and uh, Erica Mena. Called mm. Stepmother Two. Mm. Is that out yet? Yeah, that's out. Okay. Uh, I thought I saw that. Okay, yeah, that's, that's why out. I asked. I thought that's I stumbled out. on that. Uh, that's on All Black and Tubi. Yeah. 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 I just yeah. saw that. I got. I be forgetting. I got. I do. I have done a couple of stuff for, for All Black. Mm -hmm. Um, and then what else I got going on? Any? I just did a uh, on Stepmother. Yeah. Any music? Because I know you said nah, you can sing, so man. you're not. You never nah, tried in, to in lock in on that. <laughs> so you don't sing anymore. You don't. That's in not a. a that's a, not something you want to ever pursue. Nah. Okay. Once I got. Once I got in, started acting, and I started like my mm -hmm. peers and Brandy and all them and singing and hearing them sing and oh yeah, y'all the real deal. <laughs> Yeah. Never mind. <laughs> you know. I'm gonna do this acting yeah, thing. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. You know, when I back when I was on uh, Thea, on TV show Thea, it's a I show remember that, Thea. You remember Thea? I remember For Thea. For those that don't know, I don't know if it's on YouTube, YouTube, but this is a show that before, right before Brandy blew up, uh, she was actually doing her album um, at that time, and Jason Weaver was also a star of that show. Mm -hmm. Me, uh, I played one of his friends, mm -hmm. uh, reoccurring role, which is you see me every now and then. Uh, it was around singers. Yeah. You know what I mean? You would hear them sing and they were just extremely talented. Like Brandy's like the freaking vocal Bible. Yeah. And she's to, to me, even to this very day, still probably the most underrated singer in the game. Like mm -hmm. I think vocally, she's just phenomenal. Um, but you would hear people sing in that were right name, like, man, yeah. I'm all right, but gosh, <laughs> yeah. y'all the truth. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So well, I wasn't I wasn't now dancing I didn't feel the same way. I'd rumble with anybody, put me in a circle, and I'm gonna knock you out. Yeah. Tried to. <laughs> Vocally it was like ah. and I never really got a real professional had I got like professional coaching and yeah. really just honed in on it, I'd I'd probably be really, really dope. That's dope. You know That's what I'm dope. saying? Well, let me say this, brother. It's it's been a pleasure having you on the show mm -hmm. and I definitely sure. appreciate you coming. Thank you, Pat. Um Based on the fact that you have been able to keep your nose clean and stay out of BS and you've been able to maintain in this business for so long, um, what kind of positive message could you give the listener and, and the viewer? Uh, just give them some inspiration of how to get to their dream, but then also maintain it and then maintain their, their personal peace and stay out the BS. Okay, well, the combination of how to, let's address the first part. You know, getting to your dream and all that stuff has changed now. So getting to your dream, and again, going back to social media, for those that want it, it's a lot easier for you to obtain it now because of that access when we're, we didn't have that. Right. So find something uh, that you're good at 
uh, lock on onto it, perfect it, and get people to see it. Um, as far as what was the other part? Oh, how you how you keep your nose clean, so yeah. to speak. Yep. Um, mind your business. <laughs> that simple. Mind your business. That part. Um. Try to remain private. Mm -hmm. You know, be be real. You know, be presented with a question. You know, I, I can't say media training doesn't even exist anymore, but that's where I come from. Right. <laughs> you know, you just right. you, you can say things. You just need to tailor it a certain way. Mm -hmm. Um. My biggest thing you want me as far as dropping just gems or just things to think about for anybody who's trying to blow up on blowing up or have blown up. It all comes to an end, and it will. I don't care who you are. Mm -hmm. It will. It will. Michael Jackson, don't care how big you are. It will come to an end. You cannot peak forever. Someone's coming for your spot. Be okay with it. Be humble. Treat people accordingly, and you'll be all right. You go out, you know, the other way, and it's just, what's it for? You know what I'm saying? So... Come and go. And, and again, people coming and going fast now. You look at all, like I said, all these people, and it's like, all right, well, how long are they going to last? You right. Know, I got three mm. decades. That's right. And if I was, if it's all ends in belly up tomorrow, I did better than most, and I'm okay with it. There it is. Sir. That's a word. That's a word. Well, listen, man, Wesley Jonathan, my brother, I appreciate you for coming. Uh, this, this has really been a pleasure. Mm. I've been trying mm. to get you on here for a minute, <laughs> so I appreciate you. Uh, so, Rachel Renee. Producer Ken. <laughs> yes, sir. Man, we signing off Holding Court Podcast, man. Salute. Yeah.